what are we are, so this is the part about the webinar. So um, what ask, John asked me to do is uh, talking a little bit about the, the COVID virus here in Italy, not just for the sake of it, but because uh, um, I am, uh, for a while, I've been in a, in a Facebook, uh, thank you, Sean, in a Facebook group where we are starting using the standard selection chart, the tool that I'm using in school to track down the, um, the spreading of the virus in different countries. And we had a pretty amazing result because what we have found is that our level of analysis using the tool of standardization chart and using precision teaching is sometimes is far much better than the, uh, all the things that you can hear and stage for the news. And being here in Italy, in the north part of Italy, in the, where we had the most the worst effect of the COVID, the coronavirus, uh, uh, having this tool has helped me a lot to in handling the situation and see, uh, and see the things clearly. So I want to share it with you briefly some of my charts and something and some of the things that happened here in Italy, starting from uh, here. Uh, you can see the timeline. So we had the two Chinese tourists in Rome on the end of January, and they are where the first two cases reported in Italy. Um, so they were in quarantine in Rome, uh, and that's it. So there are Chinese people coming to Italy as tourists in Rome. So we need to move on the middle of February for have two cases from uh, uh, from Italy, and, uh, and you can see how the things just went worse and worse from the 16th of February. Uh, six days after, we have already 80. Uh, new cases per day, total cases, sorry, and uh, two deaths, and then the 23rd of February, we have already 155 uh, new cases and two deaths. And the red zone is when everything is closed, except for grocery store and the pharmacies. You need to stay home, except for work, food, and health. In um, the things done on the, at the end of February didn't work, so we need to take a new, our government took an, a new act in the 8th of March, and so the Lombardia and the north part of Italy where, where the, the virus is spreading and have its worst effects were declared a red zone, so we can't go. Uh -huh. So, and when that happened, the, we have already six, 6,000 cases and 360 cases, uh, death. And then you can see how fast the thing spread. The 12th of March, all the Italy is in red zone until, uh, should be until today, but they already moved on to the 3 of April, but it's going to last much longer. You can see that from 6,000, we moved to 15,000. 15, and then uh, two days ago, all non essential activities, so uh, everything that can be closed is closed. So people are not allowed to go way out. I, I am allowed to go out with my dog for a walk at 200 meters around my house. I can go out for a run. I can do anything. We just say, stay home, go to the grocery store on the other side of the road. And you can see that uh, we, now we have uh, 63 thousand uh, cases in Italy, uh, but this is 23. Uh, yesterday, there were 73,000 cases, and we are hit the 7,000 uh, deaths uh, for coronavirus. And But if you see the, how fast it is spread, you can see that the behavior of the virus, uh, assume that the virus has a behavior, is not just... It's not hard, it's not 2 plus 2, 4, but it's multiplying. You can see how fast it is spreading. So we need a different tool uh, to record the, 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 the spreading of the virus. This is um, an article that I find from, it's from Kenneth Chang of New York Times. And he was talking about different way to chart the spread of coronavirus. So you can see on the left, it's a normal chart. And it is in red, the Italy, and the blue is the USA. And you can see that uh, the, Ips, the the vertical values are uh, they are adding by fifteen thousand, so fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, forty-five thousand. And you can see the slope that you can get, and you can see that uh, Italy is doing much, much worse from USA from this point of view. And also, you can see that from February. 
18 to match the one, there is no significant change in the in the data or the, in the slope of the curve. But if I change it on the right and I go with a, a logarithmic scale, so instead of adding, I'm multiplying by 10, and this multiply by 10 holds the same space on the on the chart. So going from 1 to 10 is the same to going from 10 to 100, and from 100 to, to 1,000, and so on. You can see a really, really different pattern on the two slopes. And you can see that USA are they are getting pretty close to Italian um, values, and you can see how the virus is spreading in a really di different way. And you can have the almost um, straight lines instead of curves that are pretty harder to, to read and to interpret. So this is what I did. Uh, I started on February using the saturation chart. So this is the chart that I'm posting daily on the on, in, into this Facebook group. And this is the very, very first one chart that I did on uh, 60 February. February. You can see a small dot down, down on the, in the, in the graph. And it, it is recording the first two or three cases we have in Italy on the day. So the vertical lines are different days. You can see the days up here, 23 February, March 22, and so on. So this was the first chart. The second one was five days after, and you can see that uh, the virus was spreading, spreading pretty fast. And this is when I started having the acceleration line. So I was doing prediction about how the, the virus had, should have evolved in the next two or three weeks. And the lines that I put down on the February 22 were true also reliable, also on March 11 and uh, in uh, March 16. And this is when something has started to change. You can see this. the line here, is the slope is not that steep, it started a bit decreasing. So this is when we decided to, to chart a new, a new acceleration. And even if... Uh, the virus was is still was still spreading. Nevertheless, there was some small sign of improvement of the situation. So it's, it wasn't uh, multiplying by four for for uh, each week. Four or yes, by four each week. It was multiplying by two or three each week. Remember that in USA now you have uh, uh, multiplying by eleven. So you have one case today. 11 Ks uh, next day, and so on and so on. So you multiply by 11 for each day. You can figure out from one case at the beginning of the week with uh, multiplying by 11 for each uh, day, you can see uh, how many cases you can get in, uh, in just one week. And this is what happened here in Italy. So we started from uh, here on the 25 of, uh, of February, we have 100 Ks. By the end of the week, we have uh, uh, more than 700 cases. And so you can see that uh, on the 23 of March, this, the new generation is, was still holding. And then finally, last night, uh, we have some, uh, uh, the last three days data are showing significant uh, decrease of the virus. And you can see that the, the dots are going are out of the of the two straight lines that I've designed, and also the the death counts are going out of the of the acceleration that I've designed. So the, the using this chart gives me gave me an understand better understanding of what was going on. And now I can see that things are start to change, and I, I'm looking for forward to see the next days, the data from next days to see how much steep is going to be the acceleration. So in how much time we are expecting to recover? Um, because if this uh, uh, there is a, I would love to no. If uh, this uh, acceleration from these uh, last five uh, points uh, is going to hold it up, we are going back to one uh, 1,000 cases per day in uh, five weeks. 
So it's going to take a long time to recover. But hopefully the, the, the slope is going to be steeper and maybe we can recover in three or five, six weeks maybe. And this is when you want to you wanna have, want to have it, uh, data to rely on, not just news or some silly talking from uh, governors or people in charge. So that's it. This is my experience from from using start, the same tool that I use at school uh, to to track data about the the pandemic of the coronavirus here in Italy. And uh, like John is uh, as I said, she has posted the the link to the Facebook group uh, where there is now we are charting uh, almost every state in USA not me but people live in different states in USA and we have a charts from Germany I think UK and uh, and so on so yes if there is any questions here I am no I talk too much too fast see I should have said just one thing at the beginning of the seminar and that's I say bye bye. See you next time. <laughs> okay, uh, I can give you again my email if you want. I'm going to leave you the my email on the screen. So if you have any question you want to write me, no, Sean is typing. Elizabeth is typing. So we're going to wait. Do you want to turn your camera back on, Luca? Oh, yes. Uh, it's on? It's on. Yeah, there we go. No. Bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I always run out of time. I talk too much. No, Next that time. was great. Everybody loves to listen to you talk. Uh, <laughs> Sean, I can turn your microphone on. Thank you. Ah. How do the charts compare at the beginning of infection in each country? Sean, you won't believe it, but it doesn't matter the country, it doesn't matter the population, it doesn't matter how healthy or wealthy is the country, the slope at the beginning are the same, absolutely the same. And what changes is the, uh, for how many weeks uh, they are going to keep these steep slopes that you can see in Italy. And, uh, Italy is a, is something completely different from the rest of the world because we have a ten percent of that. So we have a, a you can see that the the red lines are getting closer and closer to the green lines. So the the red lines design the the deaths. And uh, yeah, in in each and every other chart, you will see that the count of that is going to be much, much less heavier than the one we have in Italy. So maybe you can have a 1% or 2% of people uh, sick by the virus that uh, actually die. Here we have the uh, 10 out of 100 is uh, they're going to die. And we are not keeping good counts, I think, from the um, retirement houses. I think that they are dying a lot of people that we don't know about uh, so yes the it's and uh, in in the group they have posted the charts about different uh, virus like uh, Ebola or the first SARS and the slope and the chart of this virus are pretty similar so it's like how this disease is spread into into population as a pretty similar uh, modalities Looks like Sean's typing again. Let me, Sean, let me try to unmute you. Maybe you can actually talk to us. I don't know. Did that work? Yeah, he, he, Sean is saying that it was a show from the group. Yeah, because Sean is in our group. Uh, we are a good way behind the areas in our country. Uh, but again, the infection starts off similar area to area. Yes. It starts similar and uh, what uh, again what is really different is the rate of death which is incredibly high here in Italy and uh, especially in the north part of Italy in Veneto where I live and in Lombardia but I think it's because we have one of the worst polluted most polluted environment in in the world so 
and we have a, a, a really, really old population. So the mean age of the deaths are about 80 years old, 75, 80 years old. So pretty, pretty old population. You will, a nurse just died this morning from in Mount Sinai Hospital, a young, Where healthy you? nurse. So that's not good yes. news. No, that's not. We have uh, one, two, I think, from what I can remember, two or three cases from a healthy young person dying from the virus in Italy. This, you know, you're welcome, John, uh, Sean. Yeah, so the, the solution is just uh, stay at home, uh, keep your contacts as as few as possible and then wash your hands and all the other kind of stuff that that's the only thing that we, we can do and apparently it's, it's working because uh if you see the chart on the screen uh, the red when the red zone declared was declared uh, it just we needed two weeks exactly two weeks so 14 days which is the the period of the incubation of the virus uh, uh, we need 14 days, actually 14 days, to see some of the results from the red zone. The council's deaths are not seeing that the results because uh, I think that's uh, hard behind uh, of 14 or 10 or 14 days. So we're going to see some improvements in the death rates in the next days. But I mean, I uh, usually at 6 p.m. we have the the news and with the new the new data that I'm going to post and put on the on the Facebook group in a while. So, yeah, well, that group is the best source of any any data. Yeah, it's pretty much all, all I'm looking at now. <laughs> I think you don't you don't need to work to watch um, many other things. Uh, just follow the rules that you are given and uh, watch if you want to be a little bit. Uh, Oh, both concerned about a little bit relieved from when the, the data starts showing some progress. <laughs> Just look at the, the chart and don't look at the, the linear uh, charts with that you can show you just steep slopes going up and up because the charts can take in all the data they are putting in because the, it's going to take huge charts. In here, I can chart from one to one million uh, counts per day. So. I can count forever using just this tool. So 